Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Justice League podcast. I've got some... Well, I don't know. I don't know what I was going to say there. I was gonna. I guess I was going to reveal a project a little too early because it's really not even a project. Uh, it's just an idea for a project that I may or may not do. But it, it would take a while. It would take a while. So um, I'm not. I'm just gonna. We're just gonna move on from that. Thank you very much, and get into the league. So if you don't know, we are the Justice League Ten Man League. One of the greatest leagues known to mankind. It's been running since 2015. We are in our sixth year, aka seventh season, right? Since 2015, 16, 17, 18, 19, 2020, and 2021. You count that on your fingers. <clears throat> that is seven seasons long. We've had one repeat champion, which has been me. Of course, I want to point that stat out because I love that stat, but we've had so much more than just that. We've had drama. We've had intrigue. We've had heartbreaking wins, heartbreaking losses, upset, domination. I mean, it, it's just, it's it's a great league to be a part of. We've had league members leaving, coming back, leaving, join, new league members joining, We've got a return of the king this year. Aiden is back in the league, so it's just it's there's no shortage of drama in the league. And and two years ago I started the power rankings, and this year I have started a podcast to supplement the league further. Uh, the podcast I guess is a little bit more geared towards me, I guess, because I'm I'm talking a little bit more about my team, but I do try to um, spread the wealth spread the wealth. Uh, so last week we, we've been, this podcast has been successful when the, when the, when I time it to get to about 55 minutes, that seems to be primo seems to be prime stuff right there. Um, cause look, I mean, look at these, look at these analytics. So I record the first podcast, it hits 59 minutes. I get 35 views double decent next podcast 42 minutes only 18 views so i bump it back up 49 minutes i get 22 views then i bump it even more up because i'm thinking oh the longer the podcast the the more views i get so i go an hour and eight minutes 24 views so i'm back up i'm riding the views i go an hour and 13 minutes 26 views i'm getting views all over the place and then i drop it back down i had a little bit less to talk about i go an hour 58 an hour with an, an hour and 58 seconds, 23 views. Eh, it's all right. I'm dipping back down. But then I figure it out. Podcast episode seven, 55 minutes. Check me out. 33 views. Podcast episode at eight, 55 minutes, 30 views. So it is the sweet spot, 55 minutes. I'm going to try to hit it again today, but there is a lot to cover in 55 minutes. So let's, um, without further ado, jump right in. So as I mentioned briefly, just shortly ago, uh, it is kind of geared towards me. And so we got to talk about what happened with me this week. It was the toilet bowl. I, I had previously in week one announced the Beeham Stinky Jew Rats versus uh, Morning Chub as the toilet bowl. But I was oh so wrong. It turns out that this week two was going to be the toilet bowl because me, um, Applebee's artichoke dicks, and Aaron, Uncle Ron is guitarded, both stunk it up week one. Our teams were horrible week one. We barely both got over 70 points. So it turns out we were playing in the toilet bowl. But is it too early to designate a toilet bowl? Probably. It doesn't matter. So I go into, so after Sunday, I only get 60 points on Sunday. Barely, like 62 points probably. Maybe like 61 and a half or something. It was horrible. It was a horrible Sunday for me. I I, I took a risk. I played Robbie Anderson. Um, I thought he was going to torch New Orleans because of their, you know, they didn't have any carches. Turns out it was uh, the Moore, whatever his name is, something Moore, Devin Moore, something. I don't know. Turns out he torched them. What I should have done, I should have stuck with my gut. I was going to play Debo Samuel. I was going to let Court and Sutton ride the bench this week. I was going to let him ride the bench because I just wanted him to, to get his thoughts together, um, figure that out, figure out why he, you know, 
didn't prove it up the performance. And so I let him ride the bench and I, I was going to play Debo Samuel, but at the last second, I was just like, ah, you know what, Debo Samuel, he's got that tough Philly defense to play against. Well, I didn't think tough Philly's defense was all that good, but the someone said on the, you know, the little, you click on their name and it gives you a little thing. They said, oh, he's going to be matched up against the great Darius Slay. And I was like, oh, you know what, I'll respect Darius Slay and I'll bench Debo Samuel, and I'll try out Robbie Anderson. Turns out I was wrong. I was very wrong. It was only about a six-point difference, but at least um, it would have been a little bit better. But um, anyways, I go into Sunday night thinking I'm, I'm toast. Because, um, I mean, it is Aaron. And then Aaron's going to Sunday night, not doing all that much better, to be honest. Um, I think he had like 72 points. So better, but not great. I mean, he had, we both had one player left. He had Robert Tanya, the Green Bay tight end. And I had Aaron Jones, the Green Bay running back. So if you know what happened, you will already have figured out what I'm getting to. Anyways, so I'll just jump right to the point. Aaron Jones hits the jackpot. I hit the jackpot. 35 and a half points. Robert Tony gets 11.2 points, and I nudge out Aaron 96.72 to 89.68. Very lucky. I'm very lucky. Um, I do want to say that my running backs are performing closer to what I was hoping. Chris Kirsten got 15 points, and Aaron Jones got 35 and a half. Um, and so I'm looking for that wombo combo. I mean, I don't think, I don't want Aaron Jones to get 35 and a half every week. Oh, I. No. Take that back. I take that back. I want him to get 35 and a half points every week for sure. I don't expect him to. I don't expect him to. That's the big um, uh, uh, verbiage. That's the verbiage that I'd rather use. But I am Antonio Gibson. He is. He's getting on my nerves, man. He's getting on my nerves. And it's not him. It's not him. It's, it's his team. It's his team. I mean, he had 13 carries for 69 yards, averaging 5.3 yards per carry. And they're barely giving him the ball, man. 13 carries, come on. He warrants at least 20. Because, I mean, at, at like he, in the first week, he had 20 carries, 90 yards, but only 8.8 .8 fantasy points. And I think that's because he fumbled. But the reason I was I was semi okay with that was because it was twenty carries, ninety yards. That was very good. He was just basically he was one touchdown away from a good stat line. So it turns out uh, the Washington football team hates Antonio Gibson. So unfortunately, I don't know what to do with Gibson. But anyways, my point was going to be I was hoping for the wombo combo: Aaron Jones, Antonio Gibson, Chris Carson. I figured those guys would be getting me like somewhere between. You know, I was hoping. You know, somewhere between like 50 and 80 points we can watch out. Those guys alone. That's what that's what my bar was. 80 points might is like obviously on the high end, but I was figuring like if Jones can get like 20, Gibson can get like 15, Carson can get like 15, that's you know, 15 point 50 points just from three players alone. And then, you know, I was hoping that my wide receivers would be a good supplement for that and then everyone else around just kind of throws in some coverage points the obviously the flaw with that is i didn't even mention a quarterback because my quarterbacks stink but um because i didn't draft a quarterback that was obviously a, a miss but if i can continue to get 20 points from my quarterback so it'll be 50 points from my running backs 20 points so that's 70 points from four players alone and then supplement that with a couple wide receivers maybe getting combined like 15 points that's 85 Plus, I'm hoping for my defense to give me at least like seven. That's like 92. And then maybe eight for my kicker. So that's boom. That's 100 points. That's what I'm looking for each week, 100 points. Um, and I did not get that week one. I got closer to that week two. But obviously, that was with big help from Aaron Jones. So I, I'm still trying to figure it out. I'm still trying to place it. And even though I'm like the running back guy, I wanted as many running backs on my team as possible. My wide receivers were turning out to be very good. C.D. Lamb, or we can skip over Robbie Anderson, but Cortland Sutton's looking to be the spearhead of that Denver offense. Debo Samuel's putting up good numbers this season. Nelson Aguilar gets like the most snaps out of all the New England wide receivers. Um, I picked up Christian Kirk. I probably should have picked up Rondell Moore, but I picked up Christian Kirk, so um, that's a bummer. Um, but Sterling Shepard, I picked him up. He seems to be doing all right, so I, I'm feeling, you know, where I usually don't feel safe with my wide receivers, receivers, I'm feeling relatively safe with them this year and relatively unsafe with my running backs. But I got to give, you know, props to Aaron. Um, 
for putting up a good fight. Obviously, 86 points isn't great, but I'm sure he's going to figure it out. I mean, his team is dominant. Najee Harris, Damian Harris, Elijah Mitchell. He's literally, he's got Saquon Barkley on the bench. I mean, what a luxury is that? Obviously, Saquon's, you know, coming back from a knee injury, so I'm pretty sure they're still trying to, like, uh, work him up maybe to a full-time snap percentage snap count but he he does play he's played 84 percent of the snaps against washington i guess maybe carries oh shoot yeah because he's only got 23 carries on the season so maybe they're you know they're gonna start working him up to like 20 carries maybe 30 carries 30 carries is a lot but we'll see um where that goes with him because obviously if saquon barkley hits the ceiling then that would be great news for um, for Aaron. And he's got Latavius Murray right on the bench. So that's, you know, he'll, he'll figure it out. It just comes down to, to getting the right combination together. His wide receivers are double decent. I mean, Keenan Allen and Allen Robinson, that's a great combination. And he's got the Broncos defense. I wish I had the Broncos defense. I'm kind of streamlining defenses. But anyways, Aaron's team, it's, um, it, it's on paper. It's fantastic. But... Uh, we have well, we have yet to see. We have yet to see its potential, especially when Dak gets seven point four eight point game. I mean, come on! If Dak put up a normal score line, I would have. I would, clearly, clearly, I would have lost. Like if Dak put up even twenty points, I would have lost. So, um, I'm definitely lucky to come away with that win. But am I going to complain about it? No, I need wins. You need win. Like with five players making the d thing, you need to win. You don't need to win a lot, but you need to at least stay positive. Because if you're not positive, you're definitely not making the playoffs. Like, if you're if you're thinking that there's going to be there won't be five teams that are going to be positive by the end of the season, then you're crazy. You need to start winning. So, and and that kind of goes to I don't, I don't want to like go after Aaron, but Aaron he's he's kind of in trouble right now. Starting zero and two, it's I I guess the 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 positive for Aaron is there's only one two and O team. So everyone else is one and one. So there's still plenty of room to be worked with right now, but uh, but you definitely don't want to be starting zero and two. I mean, if if you need to start win, like if we, you need a you need to come out of the gates fast in 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 this year with our new playoff system. So, um, but the, like I said, that being said, lots of one on one teams, so he'll be able to recover from that. All right, let's get into the next game. Morning Chubb versus New South Charlie Town. This one was a little bit exciting for me um, in the sense that me and New South Charlie Town, we've got kind of a bit of a rivalry, you know? I mean, I think it's a bit of an underlooked rivalry in the in the league, but but it's definitely there, you know? It was, it's, it's, it's been a thing um, for a little bit. And uh, if you go back and look at our stats, we used to play week one all the time, and that, that always made for some great matchups. Um, and so, and so the, the the tension is there. It's it's rising. It's basically like um, it's kind of like a um, how do I put this? Maybe like a geez, I don't even know. Maybe like a it's kind of like a Purdue versus Indiana. It's like the rivalry's there, but no one really cares about it. And I think they don't really care about it unless they're playing that week. But you, you know what I mean. But it, but I don't know. I, I, we, I don't have my. I, I'm just stuttering at this point. But anyways, I guess the reason I, the what what I'm getting to is New South Charlie was chirping me, you know, all week long because they beat me, and I had to sit there and I had to take the chirp. So I mean, I couldn't say anything back. Yeah, they just beat me. I had no right to say anything. So I was. I was looking bummed, but if I if I thought my Sunday performance was bad, Matt was coming off a Sunday performance where he'd scored like fifty points. That's New South Charlie Town, that is. And so I was I was getting a little giddy. I was smiling a little bit. I was cracking a smile, but I was trying to hold it back. I didn't want to, you know, didn't want to um, showboat. No taunting. You know, that's a new rule. No taunting in the league. So we are officially a no taunting league as well. Um, Got to do everything that the commish says. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so New South Charlie Town falls, uh, seventy six point eight. They lose. They they get. Um, they lose to Morning Chub. Morning Chub wins ninety two point nine eight to seventy six point eight. Um, Morning Chub just had a solid performance overall. His team's really solid. Like it's not. I wouldn't really call it bad at all. Like it's just very solid. His bench is pretty good. Like he's got Mike Williams and Marvin Jones. Those guys, DJ Moore, they all put up great points. Um, 
49ers defense, I mean, pretty much I'm, I'm, I'm kind of expecting Alex to not really change his lineup around too much. And if he's going to have a team that he's not going to change his lineup around that much, this is the team to do it. I mean, Ryan Tannehill, he's going to be just consistent, like 15 points every week. 15, 15, 15, I guarantee. I mean, he's, he's not going to put up more than 20, I don't think, but he'll definitely put up, you know, 15 points a week and reach out. That's just the way he is. Delvin Cook is an easy sit him and quit him or start him, start him and set and forget. Thank you. Um, DeAndre Swift is kind of less like that, but I mean, I guess if you're just gonna, I mean, out of all the running backs on his team, DeAndre Swift is going to be the set and forget. And then Kelvin Ridley set and forget easy. AJ Brown is the only one that I think he should change out. Um, that he should be looking at to change out, but then he's got no fans. That's an easy set and forget. If you're expecting like five points each week, Adam Thielen's a good set and forget. And 49ers defense, Brandon McManus, like a, his team is perfect for the way that he plays. Matt's team, you could say the same. You could definitely say the same. Because Rodgers, easy set and forget. Chubb, easy. David Montgomery, easy set. Tyreek Hill, easy set. Robert Woods, easy. Mark Andrews, easy. So, the, I mean, Chase, he's got Chase Claypool in his uh, flex. Steelers' defense is not doing well for him so far this year. Steelers' defense is... Um, I guess, never mind, I shouldn't say that. They played well against Buffalo, but not against Las Vegas. But, um, and I mean, his bench is fine. So, I, I mean, both of these teams have, te like, the perfect team for the way they want to play, which is, oh, I'll check my lineup whenever Johnny sends a message. Or, like, uh, <laughs> if unless they have a Q next to their name or, or unless they have a D or an O next to their name, I'm not taking them out of my lineup. And so they basically both perfectly have that have that locked in for them. Um, obviously, Matt, Matt was projected 105 points. But, like, Tyreek Hill, he only had 2.9 points, and that's because the Baltimore defense literally focused on just stopping him. Um, so if... Tyreek Hill, you know, puts up maybe like 10 points. Matt's back in the 80s. He's looking a little bit better. Um, David Montgomery, I want him on my team, but he's probably not going to go 10 plus every week. I want him to, but I don't think he will. Let's just move on. I'm just going to move on for this one. I don't think there's too much more to be said. I mean, obviously, I talked about the rivalry, so I was a little giddy that Matt kind of took his own medicine this week, you know, after giving it to me all week last week. Um... Uh, I get th I get that off my shoulders. Morning Chubb improves to one and one. Um, so yeah, enough said. We'll move on. All right, we're moving on. We're gonna move on to another. Um, I guess relatively quiet game because there was there was a few good. I mean, there was this was a very good week. I, the pro the quietest game was definitely Morning Chubb versus New South Charlie Town. Like that was the quietest game. The other four. Like, there's something exciting happening in each of them. So, um, me versus Aaron, the exciting part was a 35-point comeback to win it on Monday Night Football. That was super exciting for me. Not for Aaron, but for me. Um, but I think we were also kind of quietly battling it out because we both kind of were on the low end of the points spectrum. And so, it was just kind of in the last night that it that it was exciting. Uh, but we'll move on to Dan Bites kneecaps versus Stinky Beham Stinky Jurats. A sneaky one here, a sneaky one that was that was a bit of an upset. So last week, if you tuned into the podcast, you might have heard me going off on Connor. I was saying he might just be horrible at fantasy. He might be bad. He's no good at fantasy football. I was trying to give him, you know, benefit of the doubt for the past two years, but at this point, he's probably just trash. And he came out and he showed. Proved me wrong. He proved me very wrong. His team went off. He got 116.16 points. And I mean, just all around great performance. Only one, I'd say only one player on his team did worse than what he would want. And I mean, his bench was phenomenal too. So he had Lamar Jackson, 32.26 points. Ezekiel Elliott, 15.7. Austin Eckler, 13.5. Mike Evans, 19.5. T. Higgins, 10.0. Deontay Johnson, 10.5. Rams defense, 6.0. Justin Tucker, 7.0. So the one player was his tight end. George Kittle only got 1.7 points. In my opinion, I think George Kittle's a bit of a washed fantasy player. He was, he was all right to start last year and then he got injured and then he just didn't 
I mean, I, he was struggling with injury all year, I suppose, is his argument. But, I mean, he got 78 yards against Detroit, but that's Detroit. Robert Tanyan got, like, 78 yards and a touchdown. Um, but he only scraped up 17 yards against uh, Philadelphia. And, I mean, his schedule's not easy here on out. He goes to play Green Bay. Then, well, Green Bay gave up a lot, gave a lot of points to um, Hawk. So he might, he might be back. He might be back this week, especially since I just trashed him. But anyways, props to Connor. I was wrong. I apologize. Um, is there anything else I need to say? I mean, great bench. Marquise Brown is right in the bench. And I mean, in his flex, he's got a wide receiver. So it's just more power to him. Um, do I think he can do this again? I definitely think so. Um, but it just depends on Zeke. I really think it depends on Zeke. Anyways, we'll move on to be him, Sticky Giants. Kind of a, a very quiet day. Um, I'm not a big fan of Clyde edwards Alaire being in his RB2 spot. I just don't think Clyde edwards Alaire is like that good. I mean, obviously I can, I've got the greatest evidence of all time. I can point to his fumble, but I just think in general, he's not, he's not that good. I mean, he's n like Jamal Charles who Kareem Hunt, like those were the past couple, like Casey running backs. He's nowhere near those guys, nowhere near them. He had a perfectly fine college career and he made it onto a pro team and he's been doing enough. He only has to do so much because the rest of the KC offense is so electric. So he does enough for the KC offense, but he doesn't do enough to be, you know, RB2 in fantasy. So I think Aiden should be looking to, to pick up or slot in a new RB2. And uh, he's got JD McKissick on the bench who went off this week, but he could be, you know, boom bust. So the rest of his team is looking fly though. Justin Jefferson and Mari Cooper. Mari Cooper had a bad week this week. Uh, but I think he'll be getting plenty of points from here on out. I mean, he's got Brandon Cooks in his flex. He's got Jamar Chase sitting on the bench. So Aiden's got a lot of options um, for switching out Amari Cooper if he wants to, but I wouldn't even suggest doing it. But what he really has to do is get that get that running back uh, figured out. Um, running back two spot, because running back one, he's got Christian McCaffrey, who's just dominant and at QB he's got Russell Wilson so that's I mean the backbone of his team right here is Russell Wilson Christian McCaffrey Justin Jefferson I mean you could argue for I would week one I would have argued the backbone would have been Russ Christian McCaffrey and Amara Cooper but now it's kind of looking like Justin Jefferson is maybe a little bit more will be maybe have a little bit more consistency um every week but anyways Anything else they need to say to these guys? I don't know if they want me to say anything else. Um, they're both one and one now. Dan bites kneecaps. Good luck to ya. BM Sticky Jurassic, good luck to ya. Um, we'll just move on. All right, time. So we're going to move to, we're going to save the best, or, er, um, you know, I don't even know. I don't know which one to do next. We'll save the, the, I guess, the best for last. It is what, in my opinion, what's the best for last. Um, so next, we're going to go to I Chased Young Kids versus Cup My Nuts. So the reason this one was loud and not a quiet game was, first of all, Cup My Nuts was looking good after the first week. Loser, I Chased Young Kids was looking great in the first week. Um, so it was, it was figuring out to be a great matchup, a great matchup. And we didn't get a very good matchup, but we got a spectacular performance. From I Chase Young Kids, 147.7 points. The most we've seen this year. So that's, I mean, it's not the most we've seen ever. We've definitely had people breach the 140s and we've had people breach 150. If you've had, I'm pretty sure someone breached 160. I might be remembering that wrong. So, um, but I'm not going to fact check myself. I'm just going to, just going to move on. And uh, talk about Zach's performance. I mean, the Kyler Murray, DeAndre Hopkins. He was hoping, so he was he 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 told me he drafted that because he wanted that ten points every time they scored a touchdown. Boom, ten points for his team. And boy, oh boy, is it working! So far, they've combined for 
Let me do some quick mental math. I'm going to summarize it. So 66 plus 31. So far, they've combined together for 90 points. Together, they've got 90 points. I mean, that's just that's just phenomenal. That's phenomenal. And the, it, it's just working. And then Terry McLaurin is his wide receiver too. Unreal. Unreal. Um, so Zach's team is obviously looking great. But, oh, I didn't even get to mention the best performance this week on his team. Derrick Henry was 41.7 points. Derrick Henry is just an absolute cheat code. I'm still under the impression that Derrick Henry might, you know, kind of... Um, I was going to say might, you know, um, taper, taper off a little bit. Cause like two, he, so he had like two, 2000 yards. He's going for three, three, 2000 yard rushing seasons in a row, right? This year. I'm pretty sure that's what he's going for. I mean, it's just ridiculous. And so he goes to play Indiana. Who's got a pretty good defense, but their offense is so bad that it's making their defense bad. And then he goes to play the jets and then Jacksonville Oh my God, rip whoever has to play Zach in, against the Jots in Jacksonville. I mean, they're not even going to stand a chance. Derrick Henry's going to get like 60 points in those games. It's not even going to be fair. And then they go to play Buffalo and KC, Indiana, Rams, New Orleans. So from weeks like 6 to 10, Derrick Henry's only going to get like 25 points each week rather than 35 points. And then he goes to play Houston. So he, whoever plays in week 11, rip. Then week, oh my God, I'm 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 like getting nervous because he goes to play New England week twelve. He's got a bye week thirteen, and then week fourteen, fresh off the bye week, I have to play Derrick Henry because me and Zach are playing week fourteen, and he's going to play Jacksonville week fourteen. So my only hopes are Jacksonville somehow turns our defense around. Or Jacksonville literally does everything and anything they can to stop the run. And they just let the wide receivers go hog wild. Ugh, otherwise, I'm done. I'm done, though. Oh, my gosh. All right. I mean, Zach's team is dominant. TJ Hawkinson is a great player. But only critiques are his running back, too. His running back, too, right now is Mike Davis or Josh Jacobs. He's got Trey Sermon sitting on the bench, but... I don't think <laughs> I don't think the 49ers like Trey Sermon all that much. I mean, they made him a healthy scratch in week one. A healthy scratch, and they let the sixth sixth rounder play for him instead. So yeah, not just crazy. Um Josh Jacobs, I'm pretty sure Zach's not a big fan of him either. I mean, I'm not a big fan of him. Um but the potential's there. And flex. No one's really sitting in his flex. So I guess my treat to Tristan this week is that I won't even really talk about it. We can just kind of brush over it. He only got 73 points. So Zach, um, Zach doubled his points total. Well, just barely slightly over doubled his points total. 73.6 times 2. Just going to do it on the computer. 147.2 and so i got 147.7 so <laughs> just a a week to forget a week to forget for tristan we're just gonna ignore it we're gonna write it off jonathan taylor myers central so we'll be back um the wombo combo of seattle wide receivers i don't know how often that's gonna be prolific even though okay i literally just said in the power rankings that they're not that they're not going to be able to put up 30 plus points every week but they pretty much did put up 30 points combined i mean tyler Lockett had 23 and dk metcalf had 5.8 so technically that does add up to 30 so maybe they will put up 30 points or maybe i'm wrong maybe that one combo will work out logan thomas will be fine he's solid um i think he's just got to figure out that flex because his bench isn't great in my opinion he's out of colts defense and jalen hurts that's those are two good people to, you know, have on your bench backup, but to slot in for flex, I'm not, I mean, I thought I was high on Gaskin too. I totally thought Gaskin was going to have a great year this year, but 
He's he's very much underperforming so far, and it does not get easier for him. He has to go play Las Vegas. Well, Las Vegas has been all right against the run, but he has to go play after that. He has to go play Indiana, then Tampa Bay. So that's just another, like, two weeks of, all right, Kaskin's not going to do well. But then he gets, you know, a couple of good weeks, Jacksonville, Atlanta, but then Buffalo. So it's going to be very spotty. Kaskin's going to be very spotty unless he can turn it around. So Tristan's got some work cut out for him, but... um. Again, he's not, he'll be fine. He's one and one. He's in the loser slack off like Jim. But then again, loser slack off like Jim is looking pretty dangerous this year. I don't know. I, I won't, I won't go into you, Tristan. I mean, you're sure, even though you're kind of starting to make me think like Connor, I mean, you had that one great year, 2018, then the past two years of just not been good and so i'm just starting to it's start, i'm not saying it I'm, it's just starting to creep into my mind that's all it's starting to creep into my mind so shut that down for me make sure shut that thought down to me help, help me help me to change my view help me to believe and cut my nuts all right i i, I want to believe i want to believe in you but if um if you if you can't break 80 next week then i don't know I might have to tear into you. I might have to. So, so just do me that favor. Come out. Give me like 95 points again. Get the dub. And and we'll move on. We'll move on. How's that sound? All right. Let's, let's keep going. All right. The best for last. And I'm running out of time because I need to get the week two preview going. And I've obviously got like... The, the the elephant in the room is Matthew's new, our resident statistician and data scientist's new um, new portfolio or portfolio has just expanded with this uh, with these weekly reports. So very exciting, very exciting stuff. I don't even think, I, to be honest, I feel bad, but I don't think I can be able to talk about it this week. Um, I might have to do a fan. I might have to do a special episode, um, but that's not going to happen for couple days maybe even a week um but I'll, i will definitely get to definitely get to that special episode or if not that special episode i'll do it next week for sure full show okay so the matchup um probably the second best matchup we've had so far i think the first one is behem sticky and morning chub i think that was maybe the closest so far even though i did deem that the toilet bowl this one was this one was not quite the toilet bowl uh, uh whoa repeat ready rewind Re rewind best matchup so far foot chicken need woman in his life sigma jl grind set major key oh man what a game what a game i mean sunday night they were just trading haymakers and i think i think like i think the best team won i read like week two the best team won overall these teams are shaping up to be, you know, throwing haymakers again. Like, this is an age-old rivalry. It's been, the like, the classic matchup since or since they were since Luke came into the league. It's just been an absolute classic. We've had two fantasy championships feature both of these teams. And every time they, they butt heads, their sparks flying. It's, it's just it's the stuff that you want to see, the stuff that makes the Justice League so magical, is, is, is games like this where we get to see Sigma JL and uh foot trick and need a woman uh come against each other i mean two of probably the the best fantasy managers we have um in the league I, I think that's that goes without saying and two of the most passionate members i think as well i think they they both put their 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 blood sweat and tears into into coming out with good results um so i i gotta applaud them both i mean matthew like i said matthew's our resident statistician he does you know the second most uh, if not the most for this league in terms of data collection and and content you know um so so just I, I love this matchup i love i love going up against these teams i love reporting against reporting the games these teams play and and i got a great one here um so foot chicken need a woman in his life comes away with the upset and it was it was just a unreal performance. I mean, spearheaded by Cooper Cups, twenty seven point eight points. Woo, twenty seven four. I mean, that Cooper Cup and 
Stafford matchup or link up is just it's going to be unreal the rest of the season. We already know. I mean, 16 points and then 27 points, and it does get tougher from here. They go in and play Tampa Bay, then Arizona, then Seattle. But after that, they after you know after those three weeks, if they can weather that storm, see you later. Cooper Cup's getting 30 points every week, hands down. So, I mean, and then we also have to give it up to Devonta Adams, probably one of the best receivers in the league. And he's probably not even, like, the best receiver on this team right now. So it's just Luke's depth is, is unreal in the wide receiver position because he's got Julio riding in the pine. Just crazy, crazy stuff. So so I guess, I guess the critique of Luke's team as well is the running back position is maybe a little soft. Um, obviously, I like to point my fingers towards Joe Mixon, but Joe Mixon got 21 points last week. Chase Edmonds, I'm not convinced on. I'm not sure how he's going to shape up for the entire season. Obviously, he's got that potential. He can do it. But will he do it? I don't know. Um, but the big pickup this week was Devin Singletary. Right, um, playing flex for Luke, got 15.1 points, which I think we can all say was shocking. I mean, I you can clearly attribute it to the 35 to nothing win, but also, as Matthew said, why is Devin Singletary breaking off a 41-yard touchdown run at 10 a.m.? I mean, there's just no respect for Devin Singletary. Does not respect uh, Sigma Jail grinds that whatsoever. He he wants to, uh, you know, bury him. And then looking over at Matthew's team, I mean. The clear, the clear and obvious is Alvin Kamara's three points. But the rest of the team performed pretty much up to snuff. I mean, Mahomes, 24 points. Daryl Henderson Jr., 14.2. Stefan Diggs, 12. Chris Godwin, 12. Darren Waller was a little under the weather, or not under the weather, um, under power with only 6.5. But the New York, or excuse me, Patriots defense at 16. I don't know. Um... I guess I, I guess I'm kind of I'm, I'm I'm running out. I've I've talked about so much fantasy already. I'm 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 losing I'm losing my train of thought. But I just wanted to say. I mean, what a matchup! What a what what drama! What intrigue was that went down? I mean, great stuff. Exactly the stuff of the stuff that we want to see. Both teams are going to have fantastic seasons from here on out. I mean, I think this is a stepping stone for Luke. Obviously, he had a horrible week week one, but. But from here on out, I think, like I said, this is a stepping stone. He's going to go on to do great things in this league. And then Sigma Jail grinds that. If you aren't, I mean, I am still quaking in my boots looking at this team. Like, I don't want to play this team. I don't have to go on and play this team this week. So I am uh, I'm just going to just gonna take my 1-2 record and, and move on to wherever I have week four. I, I don't think I stand a chance. So yeah, um, let's get into the week two, see what's happening week three, sorry, week three. All right, week three preview. So as I just mentioned, I have to take on the giant Sigma JL grind set. So we'll go into the matchup real quick. Um, my lineup obviously is not set, because I don't know if I want... Teddy Bridgewater, I mean, he's playing the New York Jets. He's playing the New York Jets. So, I feel like it'd be stupid not to start him, right? But, I'm thinking I might want Kirk Cousins back on my team. Am I crazy? Am I crazy for wanting Kirk Cousins back on the squad? Oh, he's going to go play Seattle. But he loves a game against Seattle. Kirk Cousins loves playing Seattle. So, I really do think I'm going to miss out. Um, but going off of who could I pick up? Joe Burrow's playing Pittsburgh, so that's a no go. Derek Carr's playing Miami. Maybe I'll pick up Derek Carr. Danny, okay, wait, 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 wait. Daniel Jones against Atlanta. Now, hear me out before you naysayers say anything. Hear me out. He had a great week last week. 29 points, and the week before against Denver, a much better team. He had 21 points. So I'm not saying 
I mean, well, I am saying, I don't, I'm picking up Daniel Jones. I don't really want to drop Teddy Bridgewater, though. But who on my team would I drop? I guess Christian Kirk or Nelson. Well, maybe I'd drop Ronald Jones. I don't think anyone's going to pick up Ronald Jones. He does. He did start the game, but... Oof. Maybe I hold out hope for one more week. Or uh, maybe I just drop him. Oh man, I don't know. Oh, but I'm I'm picking up Danny Dimes. I'm definitely picking him up. And then I got Jaron Jones against San Fran's defense. That's not great, but it is a primetime game, so maybe that'll help. Chris Carson against Minnesota's defense, not also not great. Debo Samuel against Green Bay, could pay off. Uh, Sterling Shepard against Atlanta. Uh, Dallas Grinder against Dallas. CeeDee Lamb against Philly. And I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to bench Antonio Gibson. Antonio Gibson's going to ride the bench. I do want Javante Williams. I'm looking at him. I'm hoping that he's going to start going off soon. Um... The only problem is he goes from New York Jets to Baltimore, then Pittsburgh. So I am not, I mean, if I, I'm going to have to sit him like a, it's, he's going to ride my bench for the first like five weeks of the fantasy season because I'm definitely not playing against him, him against Baltimore or Pittsburgh. Maybe against Pittsburgh if he ends up dominating Baltimore. But um, he's just not going to see the time of day. And I mean, this would also be my last week for Teddy Bridgewater because he, I wouldn't bent, I would bench him against Baltimore and Pittsburgh too. Same with Courtland Sutton, so maybe, I, maybe I have to play Courtland Sutton just to get that one last ride. But who would I do? Would I do Debo Samuel? I'd feel like an idiot if I'd bench Debo Samuel again, though. But I don't know. Green Bay's secondary isn't that great. I feel like I got to start Debo Samuel unless like this is the week that Brandon Ayuk goes off and Debo Samuel has a quiet week. I can just see that totally happening. Anyways, it's a tough matchup, uh, but I did get the Panthers defense on waivers. Um, much to the chagrin of Matthew. But that's, I mean, the waivers are set up so that it resets each week in the reverse order of the standings. So I was probably a couple of standings higher than Matthew because my team's trash. Um, but Matthew's got Mahomes against the Chargers, Kamara against New England. So I guess those aren't ideal, you know, because Kamara... I mean, New England could stop Kamara. Probably not, but they could. Tyson Williams against Detroit, though. That's going to be a bloodbath. Stefan Diggs against Washington. That's going to be a bloodbath. Chris Godwin against the Rams. I mean, if he gets matched up against, um, what's his face, Jalen Ramsey, then he's probably going to be quiet. But if uh, Mike Evans gets matched up against Jalen Ramsey, then he'll have a good game. Darren Waller against Miami, all right, that's going to be like 20 automatic points. He's put Daryl Henderson Jr. in the flex spot. I guess he's nervous against that Tampa Bay defense to have him out there. But I guess I don't know who else I'd play there instead. Maybe Kareem Hunt. Kenny Galladay. I'd play Kenny Galladay in that spot, to be honest. Anyways, who am I picking? Or we'll move on. I've mumbled way too long about this game. So we're just going to move on. Cut my nuts against what you're going to need a woman in my life. Uh, this is a comeback game or, or a uh, panic mode game for cut my nuts. Because if he loses, he drops to one and two. He starts looking bad. But if he wins, he beats the only 2-0 team. That's a great win. He improves to 2-1. He gets a top division win. It would look great on the playoff report. I don't know. I forget completely forget what I mentioned. Uncle Ryan's get hurt against New South Charlie Town. It's probably just going to be an average matchup, to be honest. But 
if if Uncle Ron is going to start winning, this is going to be the week for him. He's got New South Charlie Town, and he's got to perform. He's got to perform. If he's going to perform against someone, it's got to be New South Charlie Town or Morning Chubb. Those are the two teams he's got to be licking his chops, looking at. Dan Bites, kneecaps against Morning Chubb. This is a very good matchup for Dan Bites, kneecaps. Um, because it'll go, it'll, you know, prove that, you know, he can take down, he can continue to beat these, you know, I guess, mid-level competitors. He's still not playing the upper level competitors yet, but if he can continue, if he can beat the mid-levels, that is a good sign. Because that means you can go positive. That means you can beat the low levels. It can be so you'll you'll have a good chance of making it in the playoffs. His matchups are ideal. Lamar Jackson against Detroit. See ya. That's gonna be like 40 points. Zeke against Philly, that could be sketchy. But Austin Ankler against KC will be good. Mike Evans against the Rams. I already talked about that. Concerned Jalen Ramsey. T. Higgins against Pittsburgh could be questionable. I might consider benching T. Higgins. George Kittle, I think, will be all right, but he is kind of busting. My advice would you be start Marquise Brown. Slot Marquise Brown instead of T.K. Higgins. That's my, that's my advice. Mm, mm, mm. And then Ryan Taylor against Indiana. Devin Cook against Seattle. That could be tough. Morning Chubb might lose some points there. DeAndre Swift against Baltimore is going to get zero points. Uh, Kelvin Ridley against the Giants, though. He'll get, like, 30. A.J. Brown, no fan. Nothing, I'm, none of these matchups are really catching my eye so far. Um, you know, cut my nuts against French Canadian woman. In the, in the I guess that one. It's just, I mean, obviously we'll see, but none of these are very flashy, in my opinion. No very flashy matchups. Um... We got to chase some kids and be hamsty giraffes to wrap up the week. Again, not just not very flashy. I mean, it's just a very mild week. A lot of interdivisional play. Only one cross division, which is Uncle Ron versus New South Charlie. Um, so, so it's a very important week if to win this week because you need those inter interdivisional wins. It totally helps you in the divisional standings. Um, which I don't think is going to affect your playoff percentage. But I don't know. I guess I really haven't figured that out yet. And at this point, I'm just mumbling away. So I'm going to try to wrap it up here. I'll make my picks. And we're going to start with I Chase Young Kids against Behem Stinky, Stinky Rat. Um, excuse me. Um, I feel like it should be no question, right? Should be no question, no doubt. I chase young kids is gonna take that. Dan bites kneecaps first morning. Chubb, I'll go. Dan bites kneecaps. I think he's got the momentum. I think he's got the matchups. Uncle Ron against New South Charlie. This is tough. This is tough. But I'll go Uncle Ron, just to try to you know boost his spirits a little bit. You know, because if he goes zero and three, that would be a bad look. That would be a very bad look. Cut my nuts versus Fudge can need a woman. I think I gotta go cut uh, Fudge can Fudge can need a woman. Just based off last week's performance, I mean, Cut my nuts has to win that game though. He must win that game. And then Applebee's versus Sigurd. I don't even think I stand a chance. Really, I really don't. <laughs> oh my god! I'm just gonna get. I'm gonna get annihilated. I really am. This is gonna be miserable. If I do pull off the win, though, I would be ecstatic. And then we'd all be looking at Sigma Jail, like, what's going on? I mean, I don't think that'll happen, but if we, if, if next week, Monday, I'm, I'm on the podcast and I'm talking and I'm saying, wow, look at me, I, I won the game. Um, I think, I think Sigma Jail is going to have to, I think, well, no, I don't think Superman JL is going to have to do anything. I think it's really just going to be a case of, like, everyone just plays, like, their best week against Sigma JL. You know, I think you, I think that curse might be in place if, you know, I think I would be the one to, to, to introduce that curse. Like, if I, if I have a really good week this week and I beat Sigma JL, I think the curse would definitely be on. But, um, anyway, but I'm still going to pick Sigma JL to win. I think if you want to bet money, I think that is definitely the uh, 
the bet to take. So I guess that is the Justice League podcast. Um, I do want to shout out real quick to Matthew saying thank you so much for that. It's awesome. The weekly reports. Those were sick. And um, I will I will definitely look at them more in depth and talk about them way more in depth next week so I can um, because I mean this is just so cool it's like a real report and he's got to donate very cool stuff very very cool stuff so yeah He's got a weekly luck percentage. That's so cool. Um, he's got a code nineteen. Dude, this is just like the coolest thing of all time. I'm just, I'm just getting lost in it. So we'll go, we'll go over it more in depth. I might do a special episode where I'll talk about it more in depth next week. But that is just, it is just the coolest thing of all time.